Coucou. Hello everyone. Today we'll make a quick pause from Oxita to bring you a new format you'll probably like, even if already done by any fake mod artist in the world. Fictional characters as Pokémon. Very original. I know. However, I'm adding my own twist. See, everyone I've seen so far made one Pokemon per character without giving them any evolution. And that's where my twist lies. It will be whole evolution lines based off one character. Kinda like an arc, funnily enough. Do note that because of this, you won't see more than two characters per episode. Luckily, I have the perfect way to show you that. Here's the rundown. I'll take two characters from any fiction and I'll make two evolution lines out of them alone with the same amount of evolution. Said character cannot be from the same franchise or even the same format. By format, I mean where the said character is from a cartoon, an anime, a comic, a video game, and so on. I'll give you a quick example. Let's say we have a Superman against Goku. Well, the evolution lines will revolve around their growth from Clark Kent to Superman for the former and younger Goku to adult Son Goku for the latter. Do note that the two characters don't have to be related per se. They may have some common points, but don't expect every character to be pairing you'll see on the internet. To you, it's the fake mon equivalent of a death battle. To me, it's the fake one version of Malex Rat Battle du Japon versus le reste du monde. J'ai déjà ce mec, c'est un dieu d'animation, regardez tout ça sous. Oui, Yukio, c'est la crochet. You got everything right? Then it's time I get to reveal the stars of this first episode. Ça, c'est un timer! Let's start with two characters I was dying to do since I first learned of those two. Make your bets on who it's gonna be. Let's go! See on two. Yes, yes. I know. Nobody expected that one at all. But I have my reason. First of all, mais bordel, j'ai le droit. Second, beyond these two being my favorite characters of all times, I do think these two can make a neat crossover. Trust me. Tu veux dire que c'est ta manière de rétamer ton Grid 7 pour avoir écorché tes perso fétiches, hein N'est-ce pas Oui. Mais non. Let me explain what he meant by that. One of the reasons for this format is indeed through Grid 7 which isn't a bad artist by any means. In fact, I grew fond of his design even if there are something that still don't make sense to be nowadays. Come on, Ron. I get the steel type. But fairy? Why? Ryoko's overall design screams dark type. Otherwise, people wouldn't say Shadow is a fursona. As for Danny, the problem goes with the art itself which he clearly admitted was a pain in the butt to do, especially with the canon art style. I still applaud him for trying to do a Schrodinger's Catmon out of the boy though. Regardless, please don't harass True Green 7 because of that. We all have manners to showcase our favorite characters of fake mods. Let's bring our depiction together as friends instead. And now... Let's go on to the designs! Let's start with Danny. I didn't went into the spoopy ghost or the Schrodinger's cat route. Instead, I went with a very particular beast hailing for Inuit mythology. The Aklut. See, the Aklut is a fusion of wolf and orca, able to change from at will to both walk on land to hunt and swim under the polar sea. It's even considered a cryptid to some extent. That sounds weird to link that monster to a half ghost superhero from Nickelodeon at first, but it actually makes more sense than you think. Danny has two forms he can shapeshift at will, 
there's the same colors as the Akut and even has an affinity with ice powers. Speaking of which, the base form has the colors of his jumpsuit before the accident. You know, they even described the freaking opening when he entered the portal before he died, but also survived. Oh pardon! I should have said before his DNA got infused with Eldritch powers from the other side. Doesn't change the fact that he's technically an undead, regardless of how much Birch Atman tried to mask it as monsters from other dimensions. Or the Sea Wolf Pokemon. This polar Pokemon comes out in packs at night to fight Aurea Borealis to howl in unison. Many believe they can speak to the dead and guide them to the other side. They follow those who are mourning to lift their moods using their powers. However, they are so silent they end up being scary. Its English name comes from Horka and Poppy, while the French one comes from Epola, a synonym for Orca, and Shio, which means Poppy. A quick note about the entry. The whole Aurora Borealis deal comes from the myth associated with the space phenomenon, which are all related to that. And it's canon that Danny is a space fat boy. Its first line in the entire show is him saying he wants to be an astronaut. Remember, this is but the base four. One based on Danny before he stepped into the portal, hence the shy and poppy like design. And it's canon once again that he once dealt with a ghost dog. So we are cool with that. Now we'll switch to Ryuk. And there are two things you need to know. One, it was planned from the get-go, she'll look like a reptile, because there are scrap dragon-like forms found in the official art books of the anime. Look at this! Look at this, for example, and tell me this is not a sign she wasn't meant to be a scaly. Not to mention Ryu means dragon in Japanese, even if her name doesn't actually mean that in practice, especially one interpretation which not only screams angst, but also it's a huge spoiler for the anime. Two, I'm going to restore the dark type, because there's no better type that fits her than this one. The girl is a Sukeban with an infinity of blood powers through red, angry, alien strings infused at birth. To summarize, Sukeban is a term for Japanese delicate girls, which is one of the patterns of giving the dark type. Blood powers is a term seen as bad and dark in many fiction and myths and we are in the dark about space. I managed to add a varsity jacket thanks to the western green lizard, a species of lizard with dural stripes and a tail ending in a brown tip, perfect to bring the scissor blade into the mix, or at least a sword tail. Molas, the devil lizard Pokemon. This Pokemon is short-tempered and has a tendency to pick up fights. The red part are said to be solidified blood, able to cause deep laceration. She protects her heaven from anyone who won't hesitate to mold them. Careful when everything say through spirit, for Moas has been seen sleeping nearby. The English name comes from Moloch, another species of lizard with the ability to use its blood as a weapon, and last. As for the French name, it's made also of Moloch, but also Rage, which uh, definitely fits her. Quick note on the entry too. The whole Citrus deal comes from the first episode where she eats a lemon like an apple. Yes, she does that. And that's a cool one to see. As dumb as that sound. And with that, we're done with the base forms. Remember, this video is far from done, because we're about to make them evolve. Our pop evolves at level 14, while Molas evolves on level 17, which refers to the protagonist's respective age by the first episode of their mutual show. When they reach this milestone, they evolve into...
Medaru Tensuke Brush. Let's switch back to Den with the first evil based off the very first season of the show. One thing to note during season 1 is how unsure your boy is. He's starting to learn Agbatico's power, you know. Plus, those same powers tend to go haywire and make him face trolls or freeze his surrounding. But despite all of this, he still wants to control those same powers so that he can help people with their paranormal problems. That's the essence of the first season. To further summon that, Aklut isn't the only sea wolf like creature in the world. Around the Pacific Northwest coast of North America, some people worship the Gona Cadet or the Wasco, a benevolent entity who will bring wealth and luck for those who manage to see it or hear its soulful owl. Megalut, the dying Pokemon. Megalut has a condensed breath to ventilate its frozen soul out. It can detect ghosts with it. The colder it is, the closer the spirit is. It is afflicted by something that not only exchanges its DNA, but also its soul. Each time it uses moves, its eyes becomes green. As usual, the English names come from Medium and Malamut, a breed of dogs similar to Huskies, but bigger and fluffier. The French name comes from Lemenon, a term often attributed to entities that aren't dead, but also alive and adolescent, which means teenager. Two things to note. One, the condensed breath mentioned in the deck century comes from Danica's sense, which is the coolest detector spider sense variant I ever seen. I mean, yes, smoking is bad, but have you seen someone puff the smoke out and say, wow, that looks so cool? That's essentially what I think of the ghost sense. Second, the left arm comes from both the arm which activated the ghost portal and Daniel, one of his clones, which he adopted into his family instead of killing her off like so many shows of the time did. And now, we go back to the first evil of the real command, which was actually a pain in the ass to do. See, I already knew I had to go to the Devil Fall Lizard because he can spray blood with it on predators from hunting it. The problem was to showcase the incomplete life armor synchronized form between Ryoko and Sengetsu. Let me give you the rundown. There are two synchronized forms in the anime. The first one you see from episode 1 to 3 and the second one which appears after episode 3. Of course, I had to censor that because YouTube doesn't like that. Here, we'll be using the former because that's the incomplete and unfused form. The one where she is not used to wear a sentient uniform. Yeah, yeah, that Skippy uniform is actually a lie. And the eye on the F side. Speaking of which, it's also an asymmetrical design due to the red gloves on the unsynchronized form and the world incomplete powerful form similar to what Medalut has going on. Suke Brush, the wrathful Pokemon. Its DNA is being tinkered by the symbiote, making it prone to fits of anger. It will actively fight strong opponents to drink their blood. They use the blood as boiling projectile or sharpened blade, but they must eat it to regain their strength. Trainers are advised to not bring chairs near this Pokemon. Let's go back to the basics. Suke Brush is made of Sukeban and Brush, which fits Ryuko's overall tomboy personality. The French one, it comes from hemorrhagie, which means bloodlust and rage again. But I replace the GI with a J. Quick reminder that blood has a big importance in the anime. From how Seketsu must suck blood to how much red that anime has, and you understand why even the shiny keeps his red. And one more thing. The Pokédex entries speak about not letting chair too close to this Pokémon. That's normal. 
more than normal. And knowing what happens at the end of the anime, I advise you to dodge that with a suke brush. Now, let me show you this signature move. Because yes, I thought about them. For Metarut, you'll get Ectobe. A ghost type laser move with a free chance to paralyze the target. If you're wondering why a laser move, that's because the majority of attacks in Penny Phantom are rage laser moves of all origins, regardless of whether it's a ghost or a ghost enter. As for Suke Brush, you'll get Twin Scissor Slash, a dragon type cutting move which will make the target lose 1 16th of their HP on each turn. This attack comes from Ryuko's weapons. The Reading Scissors. Do note that throughout the anime, she mostly fights with one half, retrieving the other half by the end of the anime. Now, let's talk about evolution again because, yes, they will evolve again, but not in the same way as the former. First, you'll need them to reach level 50. Sounds good, but that's not it. You need to give them two specific items I made for the occasion. For Metalut, you'll need the Ecto Crystal, a toxic green gem with a sinister power born from harvested souls. For Suke Brush, you'll need the Fiber Scale, a crimson scale with an ancient power born from the blood of dragons. When you make them evolve with their trinkets at level 50, they'll evolve into. and Sijirafu. And now, that's where things are going to be spicy. We're getting into the final evolution, and the one I would have given if I remained in the footstep of the other fake mon artist. One thing that I haven't said about the Denimon line is another reason why I took the Akrut as the main inspiration. Many people think that the Denimon mon should have two forms, something that was pointed out on True Green 7th video, since Nyantom is a base form with the human form as a shiny. And with the Akrut known for shape-shifting into Wolf and Norka, I figured it was the best way to showcase that. By the way, I made the World Living form more serious than Canon Human Danny, because it's been shown throughout the show, along with the official pitch that I just leaked out, that Danny is the most easily scared protagonist. Plus, we are no longer dealing with the unsure Simpa. We got an undead powerhouse who has found the motivation to bring the gap between the living and the dead. But doesn't Danny fight the ghost? Technically, yes. But since the graphic novel A Glitch in Time, he has discovered his motivation and is to bring the gap between humans and ghosts. Keep in mind, I still made it somewhat scary because unlike the Wasgo, the Akrut is the more aggressive to the two sea wolves creature and has been reported to attack humans. Aklish, the ghost exorcist Pokemon. Neither dead nor alive, it can unleash it to render all kinds of spirits. Despite being after vigilantes, they will hunt down anyone who disrespected the dead. Its nocturnal lifestyle makes them efficient protectors of the night. Rumors fix of the necrotic situation as a result of their line living in the distortion world. Aklish names from from Akrut and Lish, powerful undead even if it's not an awful ghost. As for the French name, it comes from Akrut 2 and Phantom, which essentially means Phantom. Along with the obvious reference to the cold zone and is super eroded in a Pokédex entry, I give it a darker side. Namely, the world speak ill of the Delishtik, which comes from the aforementioned hostile nature of the Aklut. But don't worry, it's only if you disturb the dead's eternal rest. Is the a usual sea wolf puppy deep down? Now, let's finish the real command line. First thing first, the final evil we have the same dual form going on with what Aklish already has. However, the catch comes from the life of a synchronization process in the anime. See, I forgot to mention that Ryuko has a casual desynchronized form which are available for both versions of the synchronized one. To switch form, she must use that fancy red glove and slide a tiny blade tip to give blood to her uniform and start the transformation. 
I'd like to point out a fun way to justify the whole dragon-like appearance. Tiamat. Yes, it's a bit weird to understand, but hear me out, hear me out. Tiamat is the dragon-like goddess of the Babylonian myths, often depicted with a semi humanoid body, which include... an impressed. We have absolute proof that Ryoko could have gotten a dragon-like form, which was probably scrapped for Kisaragi, in my opinion. Tiamat rules over the Salt Sea. And we now use the word salty to describe someone getting ultra angered. And who is the angriest anime girl of them all? Say it with me. The giraffe. The life symbiote Pokemon. This Pokemon can adapt to any situation that are all tailored to cause critical blood loss. Their regeneration is top notch and can heal a Kotlin in minutes. Pokemon can be found some bathing to chill. If a water source is red, that means this Pokemon smear the blood of trespasser all over it. Let's go back to the basics. The giraffe comes from symbiotic because of nature life others, Gojira because it's a fur dragon, and Ruff because oh fada, you don't want to anger Yoko. The French name is less bombastic as it's only composed of sang which means blood, and Furax, another French synonym of anger. Speaking of anger, that's something I've shown throughout the evolution line. Whether it's Mola speaking fight, Shoke brush prone to fits of anger, and Sijera ready to spill your blood if you dare to disturb her tranquility. Also, the green skin isn't there just to keep a certain coherence between the form. It's another nod to the anime. Hmm, <laughs> okay, show sure, it. Yeah, quite a scary reference. C'est bon? T'as fini de faire ta fangirl? Not yet. We still need to showcase their mutual abilities. Now that they have reached their final forms, Aklish and Sishiraf can use their full potential and thus their custom abilities. Aklish ability is Ghost Morph. One that gives him the ability to switch home depending on whether he's using a special attack or not. The giraffe ability is known as Fiber Sync. It works the same way, but instead of special attacks, hers depends on whether using a physical attack or not. Aside from that, both will automatically revert to the calmer forms when they reach minus 25% of their HP, which is usually what happens when both are out of energy. Another thing I planned is a bonus related to the signature moves. If Aklich beats another Pokemon using Ectobeam, his special attack will raise by 1. If Sigiraf beats another Mon using Twin Scissor Slash, her attack stat will raise by 1. And there you go! Two entire lines based on one character. Which one do you prefer? Because I can't pick either of them. These two are my favorite characters after all. And as a treat, these two will be in Oxita. That's how much of a fan girl I am to these two. The only hints I can give you is that they'll be related to these two islands, which you won't be able to reach until you finish the main storyline and unlock the DLC related to them. Ta da! You finally reached the end of this new format. One I made for the sake of taking a breather for Oxida while still making Pokemon. And also appear to the algorithm the old in my manner. As usual, if you like my video, feel free to subscribe, activate the funny bell, and even join my Discord if that suits your fancy. Up until then, see you next time for the usual Oxida format. Ciao tout le monde!